Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, we are looking at inflammation. We have a number of objectives. You should be able to, to give an overview of inflammation, describe the systemic effects of inflammation, identify mediators of inflammatory response, describe wound healing and repulsion, describe the process of edema formation. Looking at inflammation, you're saying that inflammation is the responses to injury which are normally mediated by a number of factors related to the host system. Inflammation is a protective reaction which normally aims to get rid of the original source of injury as well as the dead cells and tissues that have accumulated as a result of inflammation. Inflammation is the initial physiological response to tissue injury. And the injury could be mechanical, could be thermal, could be electrical, irradiation, chemical, or infective insults. It could be acute, that is lasting for a few days, or chronic in response to an ongoing and resolved insult. Remember, inflammation can develop in permanent tissue damage or fibrosis. So, inflammation is generally referred to as um, innate immunity. And we're saying that it normally works out by diluting, destroying, and neutralizing harmful substances, which could include microbes and toxins that normally causes the process of or initiate the process of inflammation. So, it then begins the events that eventually heal or repair the injury, the injury sites. We are saying that in the absence of inflammation, healing in, in infections and wound healing will not have been possible. Okay? So we really need this process of inflammation in as much as it causes unnecessary side, side effects. Looking at the process of inflammation, remember the main characteristics of an inflammation is redness heat, pain, swelling, and loss of function, okay? And how do they result? This is why we need to look at the process of inflammatory response. It's also referred to as phases of inflammatory response. And when you're looking at the phases of inflammatory response, we could have the vascular phase and we could have the cellular space. So for the vascular space, we are talking about the blood vessels and the blood capillaries. But for the cellular space, we are talking about the white blood cells, the neutrophils, okay? So the vascular space, we have the, they have the blood vessels normally dilate and blood capillaries become leaky, okay? So in this case, we have small vessels adjacent to the, uh, to the injury sites will dilate, will, will, will dilate causing vasodilation, okay? So increased vasodilation and blood flow is going to result in either the redness and the heat, okay? So increased uh, blood flow will lead to redness. And in, um, in Latin, we call the redness, we refer to it as rubor. And this is normally secondary to vasodilation, and increased blood flow. It's increased vasodilation and increased blood flow will lead to redness. Whereas heat, that is color, we're saying that this is localized increase in temperature and is also due to increased blood flow. Also increased to, also secondary to increase blood flow. So heat normally leads to increase in metabolic rate of tissue cells. And when there is this increase, it is going to be very helpful in regeneration. The other vascular response is the blood capillaries. You're saying that the blood capillaries will become more leaky. And more leaky it means it's going to allow the movement of proteins from the intravascular space to interstitial space. Okay? To the interstitial space. And when this happens, there is normally exudation of fluid. 
and exudation of fluid leads to a net loss of fluid from the vascular space into the interstitial space. And when there is that uh, exudation of fluid loss, it is going to lead to swelling. And swelling we refer to it as tumor. Okay, tumor. So the fluid present is termed as an exudate and characteristically is high in proteins, contents due to increased vascular permeability. So we are saying that the formation of uh, increased tissue fluids acts as a medium in which inflammatory, pro inflammatory uh, proteins such as complement and immunoglobulins can migrate through. It may also help to remove pathogen and cell debris in the area through lymphatic lymphatic drainage. Okay, so you can be able to appreciate the formation of the fibrin brain fibrin barrier as a result of the leakage of proteins from intravascular to the interstitial forms the fibrin barrier. But the problem is that it also attracts water there. Okay, okay, yes, and we have swelling. So swelling is going to result into loss of function. Also, the swelling can also compress nearby and uh, nearby nerves. Okay, so compression of the nearby nerves together with the stimulation of the chemicals, the stimulation of the nerve endings by the chemicals results into pain and both pain and swelling will result into loss of functioning, which normally leads to immobilization that could be helpful in inhaling, okay? What about this other part? You have looked at the vascular component, also look at the cellular component. In cellular component, you are saying that uh, the predominant cell of acute inflammation is the neutrophils. So they are attracted to the site of injury by the presence of chemotaxins, okay? Chemotaxins, they will be able to attract the, the neutrophils. So we will be looking at those stages where we are going to have margination, rolling, uh, adhesion, and immigration, which eventually leads to a uh, um, assemble of the neutrophils, macrophages, and monocytes, that helps in removal of the damage or the dead tissue pathogens from the area. So removal of that of those pathogens, together with the increased metabolic rate and loss of function, eventually contributes to healing. Thus, the importance of inflammation in the process of tissue injury and tissue repair. Thank you so much. Let's meet again.